By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at quite an exciting match because I'm just in love with both of these decks. One of them is mine, by the way. I'm playing a blue and red, an elemental deck, completely revised. We're going to see fire elemental, earth elemental, water elemental, like just all the elementals that you can find in revised. And I'm going to take on Matt Strott, and he's brought in such a cool deck. It's one of my all-time favorite decks. It's Elephants and Elephant Graveyard, I guess. If you have a play set of Elephant Graveyard, you know you're going to build this deck. Unfortunately, I don't own a play set, but Matt does. So we're going to look at a white and green deck with four Elephant Graveyards, four War Mammoths, and of course war elephant so i mean this is just going to be super super cool now before i dive into the deck decks of these decks and kind of explain to you what these decks wants, uh, want to do i would first like to point out that as always you can also skip that section and go straight to the games how can you do that each episode on timmy talks has timestamps and if you check out the timestamps you will see one of those timestamps marked mtg games click on mtg games that will take you straight to the action. And also in that same description, you can find more information about the rule set. Today, we are playing old school Swedish with reprints. So uh, that's it for now. Let's dive into the deck decks. And I'm gonna start with uh, my own deck, actually the Elementals deck. Let's have a look. And here we see my Elementals deck. So as you can see, it's blue and it's red. And I mean, the name of the deck pretty much explains itself, right? We see Air Elemental, Water Elemental, Fire Elemental, and Earth Elemental. Unfortunately, we don't have Time Elemental because it's not in Revised. So that's why I'm not playing it in this deck or else it would definitely be in here. I try, just tried to keep it completely Revised. Um, I actually played this at an old school tournament, played it against Power Decks. And it actually did pretty good. I mean, I went 3-2 and I'm really happy with that result. With this deck, you do need a little bit of luck. Like if you have a Mana Vault turn one, that's kind of the dream, right? Mana Vault turn one, then turn two, you wanna have two blue or two red. So you gotta be lucky there again. And that depends on whether you have an air elemental, water elemental, fire elemental, or earth elemental in hand. Because remember, these elementals, they all take uh, two of their own color to cast, right? Two red or two blue. So that's always a little bit complicated. So an easy upgrade for this deck, for example, would be to add Chronicles City of Brasses. That would make like a huge difference. But if you have the right mana and you have that mana vault turn one, you can potentially play out a big elemental, for example, a fire elemental in turn two. That means you've got a five, four body. Then you hope that it'll survive and long enough for you to untap. And then hopefully you can have two blue open to protect your elemental with a counter spell, right? And another little neat trick in this deck that I really enjoyed, especially playing against power decks, or the three Energy Flux's main board. So the Energy Flux does two things here. It kills my own Mana Vault so that I don't take damage from my Vault, right? Because after casting the Elemental, it has done its job. But it also is a, really a big problem for players playing with Moxon and other like heavy artifact strategies. So Energy Flux is really a card that if you can just drop it early, it is such a great weapon against uh, against the Moxon, and that makes it really, really good against power decks, in my opinion. Um, another card that's quite good in this deck is um, the Earthquake. So you may think, why play with Earthquake when you've got so many ground creatures yourself? Well, remember, these are elementals, so they're pretty like beefy and big. So I can just cast an Earthquake for three without killing anything of, of my creature base but it will probably damage a lot of creatures of my opponent and it kind of fits in well with the direct damage strategy that of course is in this deck also because I am simply playing with red, right? So I really like Earthquake because it kills the creatures of my opponent and it deals some damage to my opponent as well. So it's this very flexible card. Um, before we move on to the deck of Met, I would just like to point out one card in my uh, sideboard and uh, that is the card that destroys all planes. The reason that I'm mentioning this card is that we are playing with sideboards today and I think this card is going to be very, very good after sideboard against Matt because obviously he is playing uh, green and white. So this is just a great way for me to kind of destroy all his planes. So probably after the first um, after the first game, I'll take out my stone reins and I'll put this card in. Okay, this is the deck deck for my deck, and now let's continue to the deck deck of the deck of Matt. Let's take a look at his Elephant's Brew. 
Elephants, elephants, elephants. That is what Matt is bringing to the table today. And what a beautiful deck, Matt, did you bring to this match. Man, it is just gorgeous to look at. Let's maybe first focus on the lands that this whole deck is built around. That's, of course, Elephant Graveyard, uh, a card from the Arabian Nights. What I love about this land is that you can also tap it for a colorless mana, right? So if you don't need the ability, you can still tap it for colorless mana. But why it's in here, of course, the main reason is its second ability because you can also tap it to regenerate an elephant or a mammoth and so the the combo is easily made you know you want to combine this in an elephant's deck and a mammoth deck and here we see a full playset of war mammoths and a full playset of war elephants and i just i just love the war elephant because it's got banding i think that's super sweet banding is such a nice ability and it has trample so one of the things that matt can do and i'm really hoping to see you do that matt is Band a war mammoth and a war elephant and kind of attack. I just find that so flavorful that like a stampede is coming towards your opponent. It's just fantastic. And it makes a 5-5 trample because it keeps the trample ability. Why? Because both creatures have trample. So it's really quite nice. Then you can even throw in an army of Allah, give it plus two, plus oh, make it even bigger. And you know what? Add a Berserk. Unfortunately, Berserk, you cannot play it on the whole band, so you have to choose one creature. But still, I mean, it's just going to be madness. Another thing that I really like, and that's something I used to do when I was young, but when I was first started playing Revised, is I would make mini Forces of Nature. Like, I didn't have a Force of Nature, but War Mammoth was a common, Giant Grove was a common. So I would make these mini Forces, I would call them, and I would put a Giant Grove on my War Mammoth, and it would turn into a 6-6 Trample, which is almost as big as the Force of Nature. Talking about Force of Nature, we also see it here in this deck, which I think is really sweet. Um, just overall, we see a lot of creatures. I think the strategy is pretty clear, right? You just want to ramp up with your Birds of Paradise, get your Elephants out, put your Giant Groves and Berserks on your Elephants, and just trample over the opponent. I think it's just sometimes life is simple, as simple as that. Um, some little synergies I'm really liking here are, of course, the Army of Allah with all the trample creatures. Um, remember, Army of Allah gives plus two, plus oh to all the creatures, so I think that's really good. Another thing I quite like is the combination Berserk and Balance, because when you attack and you Berserk your creature, you double the power and you give it trample, um, but then it dies at the end of turn, which is okay, because if your creatures die, it means your balance actually gets stronger. So if you've got a balance in hand, the downside of this is you do have to wait an entire other turn, but I do kind of like that idea that you can, in a way, sacrifice your own creatures to make your balance a one-sided Wrath of God. And, of course, deal a lot of damage because I'm assuming that a Berserking Elephant is really going to hurt the opponent, which is, in this case, me. Um, looking at the sideboard, by the way, because I also discussed the flash fires in my sideboard, when we look at the sideboard of uh, Matt, we see a few really good cards against me. He's playing with Tsunami there in the sideboard. He's also playing with Circle of Protection Red. I think both of those cards are definitely coming in after sideboarding. So that is a little bit scary to look at. Um, but okay, you know, it, it, it's there. I have to find a way to uh, to work around it. Maybe just counter them. Anyway, um, I'm getting ahead of myself. This is the deck of Matt. Matt, man, beautiful, beautiful deck. We looked at my deck and that means we're ready to go to the matches. Let's start with game one. Game number one, here we go. So it's Matt Strott sitting on the right with his elephant deck and on the left, it's me, Timmy, and uh, I'm playing with my elementals deck. And uh, maybe there's something you noticed because we both have the same play, Matt. This is a beautiful wood elemental made by Brian Snoddy. And a nice thing to note here is that Matt is a huge fan of this card and he's made his own high resolution picture of the wood elemental and um, as part of a fan art project. And then he printed it out on a play mat. And when I saw it, I was like, wow, I have to have this. And I contacted Matt and he sent me his high resolution picture and I printed it out. So thank you, Matt, for that. And I believe Matt actually contacted Brian Snoddy to show him his image. And yeah, Brian was very, very impressed with it. He was very happy with it as far as I understand. There are some nice little details that Matt added. It's just a beautiful piece of work. And just to clarify, it's completely fan art. So there's no commercial purpose with this. It's just love for the card, Wood Elemental. Um, it looks like I've... Have I taken a mulligan or has Matt? Or are we just really slow at shuffling and getting our cards? I guess it's the last one. Anyway, um, I had a six there on the roll, I think. So I can start getting seven in hand. There's an island starting with a mana vault. So this is a great start. This is what I want to do, right? And then hopefully get a second blue and cast a water elemental or an air elemental next turn. There we see a planes by Matt and a past turn. 
So no birds of paradise for him. There's a second blue source. Okay, here we go. Elemental time. Oh, oh, this is something else. Brain geyser. Brain geyser here for three. That's not too bad. I mean, it's actually pretty good, but I'd rather just, you know, play an elemental. So it's quite interesting. There is a Savannah by Matt and a pass turn, taking a damage from my own Mana Vault. And playing another Mana Vault. Okay. And no land drop here. Missing a land drop. So this kind of explains the Brain Geyser for three in turn two. I had no lands in hand except for those two islands. So I went into dig deeper in my deck to find some lands. It looks like I found one from the top of my deck, by the way. There's a Volcanic Island tapping five. And is it now? Yeah, elemental time. There we see water elemental. Five, four. Oh, a quick. Oh, a quick sorts to plowshares. That is, that is pretty painful. That's, of course, the danger, uh, you know, when you're playing against these white decks. There is a war mammoth. Things are looking really, really good for Matt because I've got two tap mana volts. That's going to hurt me for two. And now he's got a 3-3 three, three war mammoth so he can hit me for three next turn. What I need right now is a Lightning Bolt to take care of that War Mammoth. That would be ideal, especially now that the Elephant Graveyard is tapped. Playing an Energy Flux instead. Okay, so this is kind of nice to show you that little trick with the Energy Flux that I talked about. So I'm now going to use the Energy Flux to actually get rid of my own Mana Volts so that I don't take the damage anymore. I'm going to drop to 18, by the way, after that attack with the War Mammoth. We also see a War Elephant joining the team of Matt. I mean, this is going to be a Stampede. Remember, uh, War... Elephant has banding, so he can ban it, make it into a 5-5 Trampler. And now I'm going to lose both of my Mana Volts, but that's going to save me some pain. And, I mean, I really need to step it up here. Am I going to cast another Mana Volt? Rem remember, I'm playing a full playset. Ooh, I'm not. I'm actually casting a Soul Ring. It looks like I'm really stuck at the moment. What am I going to do here? What am I going to cast? Oh, Wheel of Fortune! Wow. Oh, look what I'm throwing away. That's such a good hand. And there's the hand of Matt Channel. I think I saw a Disenchant there. And a Regrowth and a Giant Grove. That's actually pretty good. And the reason I'm playing this is because maybe you're wondering, why is he doing this? I just don't have enough lands and I'm behind on board and I have two counter spells in hand. Remember, a counter spell is just not really good when you're behind. And I kind of felt pressured and I just needed lands. So hopefully with, with this, I found some lands, you know, maybe an earthquake to try to deal with the elephants, even though Matt has got double elephant graveyard. Look at this giant grove on the war elephant. I'm just dropping to 10 here. Soaring has to pay for itself because of the energy flux. Playing a mountain. Hopefully I've got something big to cast. Tapping four, tapping five. Are we going to see an elemental? There's a fire elemental. Now, the problem here is that my opponent has those elephant graveyards. It looks like he's frozen at the moment. Okay, I think he's back. Yeah, he's back a little bit shaky, though. There's a Birds of Paradise. But what I wanted to say is the problem here is that Matt has those two elephant graveyards. So he can just attack with his elephants and just regenerate them when I block them on fire elemental. So he's putting them in a band that's even better. So five, five trampler. And it looks like I'm just going to block here. I don't want to take all the damage. And then he can just put all the damage on one elephant and regenerate it. And I even get one damage trample. Because remember, they both have trample. So this is just a really bad exchange for me. But I kind of feel forced because I'm so low on life. And playing another Mana Vault. I mean, I'm finding a lot of Mana Volts. Oh, there's a Fireball! Hitting it for three each, trying to kill at least one of the elephants. Remember, he's got Elephant Graveyard for the War Mammoth. There's an Avoid Fate, but I think you cannot use Avoid Fate against Sorceries. It's only Instants and Interrupts, and that's actually the case. That's one of the reasons why this card is just not great. I mean, at least they could have made it work for Sorceries as well, right? But hey, in this case, I'm happy with that because at least I get to kill one of the elephants. I'm still in a really, really bad spot because I'm on nine. I've got nothing going for myself. If I can find like just an earth elemental or just an elemental creature, I can at least block the war mammoth. So now he's going to swing in. I'm going to drop to, I, I think I should be on, on six actually. I'm only taking two damage here. That's a mistake because I was on nine. So I should have gone to six. So sorry, Matt, for that. Playing a Vesuvan Double Ganger, so probably gonna copy the War Mammoth. 
But remember, Matt has an elephant graveyard. I mean, Vesuvian is great, but not when I don't have any elementals on the table. So he's now going to re regenerate the War Mammoth. I'm going to take... No, I'm just going to take the damage. Going to drop to four. I think that's a good decision. War Elephant there as well. There's a Stone Rain on one of the many, many elephant graveyards. So it's not really going to help it. I mean, look at Matt. He's still on 20. I haven't heard him a single point of damage. And he's now trampling over. I have to block on the War Mammoth. Still taking two damage, trample damage. Going to go down to two. And... Yeah, he can just divide the damage so that he doesn't even have to regenerate his elephant. Two damage on the War Mammoth, one damage on the War Elephant. So it's just looking really, really bad. Look at that, two mountains in hand. And that's it. First game is won by Matt. And Matt, man, I'm impressed by the deck. Let's just uh, quickly shuffle up sideboard and uh, let's see if I can do better in game number two. Game number two, here we go. Hopefully I can find the right cards and I can really make it into a game and uh, make it 1-1. It looks like I'm, oh, I'm gonna shuffle taking a mulligan here. Man, that's not a great start. And while I shuffle, maybe it's nice to share my, my own wood elemental anecdote with you because I was playing at the Camel Trophy, I believe, in Arnhem, organized by Bjorn. So shout out to you for organizing such a great event. And I was playing Argivian Archaeologist and Chaosorp in a deck together. And um, it worked pretty good. I was able to flip a lot, but guess what? I missed tons and tons of flips. I think six or seven in total. And then at the end of the tournament, I actually got a prize for missing the most flips. Guess what the prize was? It was a wood elemental. So I've got like a special connection with wood elemental as well. So I'm just really happy to own a wood elemental playmat. And uh, also just thanks to Bjorn for handing out such a cool price. Um, anyway, looking at the game here, we're both just having quite of a slow start, just casting our lands and passing turn. So no Birds of Paradise, for example, and no Mana Vault from, uh, from my side. And Matt Strahd also not finding that Birds of Paradise. And um, is he going to find a land here? Or does he have to discard? He's a little bit in the tank. Going through his hand. Ooh, he actually has to discard. Disenchant gone. Remember, he needs four mana to cast cards like War Mammoth and War Elephant. I've got five lands here. Probably going to cast an elemental. Exactly. There's the water elemental. 5-4. And I hope for Matt that he's got a source just like he had in game number one. The problem with these elementals is they're so big. If you don't have an answer, look at that. Another discard by Matt, not finding any lands. Ooh, Vesuvian Double Ganger making a second water elemental. Matt dropping to 15. Okay, finding at least one sword, taking care of the Vesuvian Double Ganger. That does mean I'm gaining five life. But I can still attack, gonna put him on 10, gonna half his life. The problem for Matt here is he's just not finding any lands. Oh, flash fires. In this case, he's just a stone rain, but I mean, Matt's already low on lands. This is a huge problem. Doesn't have any white swords, so even if he has a second sword, he cannot cast it right now. Another discard. Oh, Matt, man. This is painful because he's just not finding the lands, you know. You cannot play magic if you don't have any lands. At least most decks can't. And look at that. He had a balance in hand and a swords. Sorry, Matt. This is also part of magic. Sometimes these games, I call them non-games, right? They happen. It is what it is. At least the silver lining here is that it's 1-1. And that means we're going to go to game number three. Game number three, the deciding game, 1-1. One, one. It's Matt on the play, starting here with the Sol Ring, so that is a good start for him. Let's see if I can find a Mana Vault turn one. Just playing a basic Mountain and Passing turn here. And is he going to cast an Elephant turn number two? That would be Living the Dream for Matt Strahd. Are we going to see a War Mammoth here? No, we're not. Looks like he's passing turn. I guess I'm lucky. No War Mammoth, no War Elephant. Both creatures have a casting cost of four. There's a Plains. Okay, there's an Elephant. So found it on the top of his deck. And he's got his Elephant Graveyard open to regenerate it. Perhaps he was just keeping it on hand so he could cast it with Elephant Graveyard open. Knowing that he's playing against Red. There's an attack for two. So I'm going to drop to 18 here. And I'm having quite a slow start again. Tapping four, there's an Evan Earl's Disc. Now, this is a synergy that I didn't really discuss in the deck deck. Ooh, Counterspell. Obviously, an Evan Earl's Disc works really well with Elephant Graveyard and Elephants because you can pop the disc and then you can use your Elephant Graveyard to regenerate your War Mammoth or your War Elephant. 
So that is some really nice synergy as well in the deck of Matt. Also playing my own uh, Sol Ring here. And now, ooh, using this Integrate against the uh, War Elephant. That, of course, works really well because you cannot regenerate it with a Disintegrate. So that Disintegrate is just a great way to work around the regeneration clause. And here we see a balance kind of working as a Mind Twist in response, playing a Bolt on Matt's life total. Three cards in hand, and I'm losing a land here as well to the balance. So it's not too bad of a balance for me. But, I mean, it is a two for one for Matt, of course, because I'm losing a card and losing a land. Tapping five. There's a Fire Elemental. Two cards in hand past turn. And Matt casting a Sarah Angel. Wow. Haven't seen the Sarah yet. So, of course, I'm going to attack here with the Fire Elemental. And we see the damage taken here by Matt. He's going to drop to 12. There's a Flash Fires. Again, we saw it in game two. We see it here in game number three. It, again, it's pretty devastating for Matt here. Because now he only has colorless mana. So he needs to find... Okay, at least he finds a forest. Can he, for example, cast a War Mammoth? Because with that Elephant Graveyard, he can give it regeneration. And then he would have a blocker for my Fire Elemental. I mean, Matt is still very much in this, but he kind of needs to find the right cards, right? As always with, with these magic duels. Taking four in the air by the Sarah, gonna drop to 14. Gonna attack again, and he's gonna block on the Sarah Angel. And tapping five. Ooh, there's an air elemental. There we see an Evanerals Disc. Okay, that is actually pretty good. I do have two blue open, though. Do I have a counter spell? If I do, I don't. I want to say if I do, I think this game is over, but I don't. Attacking for four. Matt's going to drop to eight. Playing a Stone Rain on the Elephant Graveyard. So I also kept the Stone Rains in, of course, against those Elephant Graveyards. That makes sense. Attacking for four, and he's going to pop the Disc. Do I have another elemental playing an island? One card in hand passing turn. There's a plains. Okay, so Matt's finding some lands again. We're both in top decking mode. Okay, there's more mana for him here. Playing another land, two cards in hand pass turn. This is quite exciting. I'm on 14, Matt's on eight, game number three. Ooh, top decking fire elemental. There's even more mana. He's got enough mana now to at least cast an Elephant. That's what he's going to do here. Remember, Fire Elemental has 5 power. So I can bring him from 8 to 3. So he's probably not going to chump here yet. He is. Interesting. I thought maybe he wants to wait. So he's not taking the damage. But he is losing the War Mammoth. And I'm passing turn. 3 cards in hand. Also remember, I am of course a red player here. So I have Burn. There's a Bolt. Giant Grove. Oh, nice. It was Bolt the Bird. There's a Fork. Oh, that's so sweet. Oh, this is so funny. Unfortunately, Berserk doesn't help because it only doubles the power. So it's not going to help. But what happened here, right? I played a Bolt. Uh, and then he played a Giant Grove to save it. And then I Forked the Bolt. There's an Elephant Graveyard. He needs a blocker right now. No, he did have a Sarah in hand. Pointing out my counter spell though, but ooh, man. This was so interesting. And let's just have another look at that play, right? When I tried to bolt the bird. So I'm here playing a Lightning Bolt. In response, he is casting a Giant Grove to save the Birds of Paradise. And then I'm forking it. And what he's trying to do is play out a Berserk to double its power and toughness, but that doesn't work because Berserk only doubles the power. So it was a cool idea, though, to kind of like keep my birds alive, you know, to to block the fire elemental, but it didn't work. And eventually, uh, you know, he, he couldn't make it. He, he just was too low on lands, but I really enjoyed uh, this match. And, and just thank you, Matt, for bringing such a beautiful deck to the table. We see it here uh, on the screen. It's just uh, just fantastic to look at and um yeah i guess i guess i've won uh with my elementals deck let's take a look at my deck this is really a joy to play and it's actually um you, you can make a budget version of this and and i know budget in old school you know i've got to put it in quotation marks because they're just so many expensive cards that you sometimes forget that a mana vault is also expensive but i think in old school it's you know it's considered budget because you can get a reprint and 
it, I know it's expensive, but it, it's doable. Let me put it that way. Um, you can change the dual lands, the volcanic islands, actually with City of Brass. Uh, that's kind of a nice budget way to still have access to the mana. And and then this, you know, this deck works pretty good. Yes, there are some upgrades to make, but if you're playing on a budget and you would like to try out like a, a, a deck with multiple colors, uh, you know, get your City of Brasses. And this is actually a deck that you could build. Let me know in the comments below if you uh, agree or disagree. And uh, I'd also love to hear from you. What is your uh, favorite budget deck? Um, that's always interesting. And, and what do you think of the Elephant's deck? I mean, I think it's a pet deck of many, many players. And if I would own four beautiful elephant graveyards, talking about money, by the way, um, yeah, I would definitely build an Elephant's deck uh, of my own because it just looks like so much fun. And uh, remember that game one where Matt was really dominating with his elephant graveyards. It's really difficult to deal with regeneration creatures in old school. So yeah, it's uh, it's really cool, really good match. I would like to thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. Um, and if you want to support the channel, uh, please consider liking, sharing, and commenting on this post. All that is free and helps the channel move forward. And what you can also do is you can also become a subscriber and ring that bell. So thank you very much for that. All that helps Timmy Talks moving forward. And the last thing that you can do to support the channel is actually become a sponsor of the show. And you can do that by joining Timmy Talks on Patreon. There's probably an info card popping up right now. Click on that info card for all the information. It already starts with $1 a month. And the cool thing is you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord. Uh, you can meet Matt if you want to. <laughs> and you can, uh, you know, a lot of Timmy Talks uh, supporters also play games amongst each other, which is quite nice because they all kind of have the same, you know, idea and vibe of old school magic. And um, another nice thing is that your name will be mentioned in the end scroll after each video, including this one. So without further ado, let's go to the end scroll and take a look at our fantastic Wunderbar patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. Here we go. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Somebody can see.